Hey you guys, Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video and welcome to my YouTube channel. And if you are not on my YouTube channel, be sure to head over there after this video and subscribe so that you get my videos as they come out. All right, so today I wanna to answer a very common question. It would be probably in the top three questions that I get to our email, in Facebook, and in all the social media. And that has to do with, um, do I need to work on every single trauma that I've had in my life in order to heal? And the answer to that is no. That would be kind of impossible, mainly because as humans living on this industrialized planet of ours, domesticated human species, we have had so much stuff happen to us that we, there's no way that we can remember every single thing and nor would we want to, it would just be too overwhelming. So in order for me to answer this question, I need to do a very quick overview of what the main types of traumas are. A little side note, and I will suggest that you check out another video on what trauma actually is afterwards, because that'll dive into this deeper, but essentially, Trauma is not in the event. Okay, I'll say that again. Trauma is not in the event. It is in the nervous system, in our body somatic memory, stored in our muscles, and in, in how our body posture is, and in how we really process throughout our entire nervous system. So not just the autonomic nervous system, which is our fight, flight and freeze shut down, but also our central nervous system, which is our brain and our spinal cord. So this stuff is not linear, which is why it's hard for me to make, you know, a three minute video to explain everything, just not possible. But if we think about trauma, it isn't necessarily in the event because somebody can have an accident, say, you know, a car accident and they walk away and other than maybe a little bit of stiffness, they don't end up with say PTSD or fear of driving again. And this has to do with, with what happened to that person early in their life. So how their nervous system was set up foundationally, was it healthy, their upbringing, was it not? Were they kind of bred into this fear response from the get-go? If that's the case, then something like a car accident might put someone into PTSD. Something even smaller, like falling and slipping on the ice and, and breaking a wrist might put somebody into a full-blown PTSD attack. It really depends on the history. So now if I go back to the different types of traumas, I'm gonna talk about three. And remember, this is in reference to the question, do I have to work on every single thing that's happened to me? The answer is no. So first type of trauma, shock trauma. That would be that car accident or that slipping on the ice and, and breaking your wrist. That would be, um, believe it or not, things like assault and rape and being shouted out on the street. When you are an adult, when you are old enough to cognitively remember the event. All right, now there might be some rough edges around that definition, but by and by that is shock trauma. So anything that shocks us, threatens us, um, and we're really consciously aware of it and we can put cognition and really bring up the memories of that event, since sensory memories, feeling, but also what we were doing. Second type of trauma, um, and these are not spectrum in that one is better than the other, it's just this is how I'm listing them out. Second type is early developmental trauma. This is so broad and I really could have an entire vlog on this topic, but these are things like early birth trauma, in utero trauma, um, being hospitalized as an infant. Say you were born premature and you had to be in an incuba incubator and you didn't have human contact and connection and mama close to you and breastfeeding and all that healthy, yummy stuff that we need to grow our nervous system at the beginning, that would be classified as an early developmental trauma. The other ones that are bigger and a little more insidious and unfortunately epidemic in our culture, especially first world countries, is neglect, poor attachment with our parental figure, caregiver, um, the inability for a little one to be nurtured and held when they are scared and crying. There's this um, thought that I hope starts to 
go away, that a baby isn't going to learn how to soothe itself unless it is left to cry itself to sleep. Um, again, did some other videos on this, make sure you check it out. But a little person, when they're little, like under the age of three, they don't know how to soothe themselves. They don't come born like um, a, a calf does or a um, fawn does. If we think about cows and deer, they don't pop out knowing how to walk and eat immediately. This is why humans are so unique. We need incredible care, nurture, attachment, bonding, security, safety, in order to grow a healthy human nervous system. If we don't get it, that poor little nervous system ends up literally being dysregulated within their nervous system. So that would be the early developmental trauma and the wires that needed to be literally wired for good health never really got wired. They just kind of left, were left dangling without any connection. This kind of early trauma is what breeds, as we're seeing in the research, chronic illness later in life, especially things like fibromyalgia, chronic pain, autoimmune conditions, etc. The third type, so I've got the first type was shock trauma, second type, early developmental trauma, um, which isn't just due to neglect, it can be surgical procedures and a little one just having a bad infection or fever where their system goes into like near death state, okay? So that's, that's early developmental trauma. Third is what I call chronic stress of just living in this world, which if you're watching this, you probably have had some form of that. You might even be experiencing some of this dysregulation in your nervous system because of lack of sleep, having to go, go, go too much, not being able to follow your impulses during the day when you're tired or when you're hungry or when you need to even go to the bathroom, right? We have completely bleached ourselves of all organic intelligence. And I'm totally generalizing here, but we have done so much to untrain ourselves to be in our natural capacities, our natural biology. And when we do that over time, over years, over decades, it wears on the system. When we think about, do I need to heal every single thing? I like to say, start at what is possible right now. So in other words, if you um, have say an accident, I hope you don't, but let's just say you do. Take the necessary steps from this point forward, from watching this video forward, to not rush out of that accident, to wait and pause and feel the intensity and the emotions, to cry, to scream, to ask for help, even though it's something you've been taught not to do. I've made other videos on how to deal with shock trauma. I'll post that again in the show, in the show notes of this video, show more section. Watch that because we can do a lot by how we um, move forward with the current traumas we have. So, you know, you fall and scrape your knee. Don't just pop right up. Stay there. Wait until the heightened part of your nervous system comes down. The interesting thing is that if you've had lots of shock traumas in the past, by taking care of all future ones in a way that's much more holistic, much more biological, it kind of um, shakes up and makes those past ones less intense. I know that might seem a little elusive, but it just does. It puts a little more freedom into the system. So that's one thing. Second thing, learn more about this information. I have got so many videos, so many eBooks, take advantage of them. I have an upcoming um, healing trauma video training series that I run twice a year. It's called Healing Trauma. That dives into the importance of building what I call the, the capacity in the human system to have more space. And we, when we have more space, we have more potential to take in stress, but also let go of the stress and the traumatic events that are still sitting inside of us. So if we can grow more capacity in our, in our ability to feel what's going on inside, not hold it so tight to us, release it a little bit, we kind of soften up the system. And then what's interesting is a lot of past events and traumas, we might start remembering them, we might start feeling them, but not in a way that's scary. 
in a way that we actually can contain the intensity of the emotion, the feeling, the sensation, and then release it. And this is one of the beauties of our human nervous system is even if you've been holding on to stuff for decades, when you start to open up the capacity to, sen to sense, feel, all these things, the system kind of is like, oh my God, this is, this is what we've been waiting for. Let's do some work. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. With that might come some pain. There might be some intensity. You might feel anxiety for the first time in your life. You might tremble a little differently when a stress occurs because you're not frozen and shut down in the same way. This is all good. Now, the other thing is let's just say that you were someone, which many of us have been, had a lot of early trauma, a lot of pre-verbal trauma. So before you could talk, before you could make sense of what was going on, this requires a different approach. This doesn't just require um, allowing things to be felt it, and waiting for them to dissolve. It means actually teaching, it actually means teaching the system how to feel safe again. Now this is a much longer conversation, but suffice it to say what that person wants, we want to teach them how to feel safety again. And not just kind of cognitive safety like, yep, no bears here, no one's attacking me now, that kind of cognitive safety, it's an internal safety. Something that can't be taught overnight, can't be taught in a weekend workshop, it takes diligent practice more education and tuning into what I call the stress organs. Things like how the stress chemistry, your adrenaline, how it pumps out when you're in fear, how your system goes on alert even though there might not be anything around you. So all these automatic reactions that occur at the stress chemical level, we want to literally get into that area, be aware of it, be biologically aware of it, and believe it or not, sit with it, feel it, and wait for the intensities to pass. Now, I, I say this as though it's like easy to do, like you can do this just, you know, by me telling you this, it's not that simple. It requires a little bit more education, a little more know-how into what's actually happening like in your stress chemistry, this is something I teach. So this is you and you are interested in working at those levels, those early developmental trauma levels. Definitely check out more of what I do. Check out this healing trauma video training series because I dive into this idea of capacity and safety much more. And also the importance of sequencing our healing so that we take care of that stress physiology first. I've done many other videos on stress chemistry. I've also got some articles um, and vlogs that I will link below that you so you can check them out. So back to that initial question, do I have to work on every single trauma? No. But I will say this one thing. If you know you had a massive car accident or a big fall on a ski hill or you had an assault by a stranger or not a stranger, Sometimes it is important to work on that specific incident, especially if it's something that keeps kind of looping through in your brain. What's, what's happening is your physiology, your body is wanting to release that somatic memory, that body-based memory. And then because we're human, we go to our head and we try to make sense of it and think it away. But if we were actually threatened to our physical body, and there was a fight, flee, freeze response that mounted and we never got out of it, we never got out of it and got rid of the shock, then I think it's important, I don't think, I know it's important to work specifically on, the, on that event. That is something that you want to do with a trained somatic experiencing practitioner. This is the work of Peter Levine, which is what I study and work with. That's what you want to seek out, whether it's through me or through one of my colleagues. So definitely look into that. If you're someone, here's the next thing that had both, let's say you had early trauma and you've had lots of shock traumas and you live in this industrialized world, then it depends on where you're at. If you're someone that has a lot of chronic fatigue, low energy, adrenal fatigue, then you wanna work at growing the capacity of your body first, getting some more fuel in your tank 
before you start working on the specific shock traumas because if you don't have more energy in your system, if you don't have that capacity to muster up the sensations and the qualities of fighting and fleeing and releasing those survival energies, you won't be able to get to that point of activating those old memories to get out of them. All right, I hope that makes sense. So if you've got also chronic illness problems as a result of early trauma, developmental trauma, you wanna work on regulating the nervous system first, gaining capacity, gaining that cellular safety so that you then can work on say that car accident or that assault that happened when you were older. Then that process of working with that shock trauma is gonna be much more effective. What I see is a lot of people going to somatic experiencing practitioners, my colleagues, which is great, and they try to work on their shock traumas first and it's not effective. They can't get the system energized enough to release that stress and it's usually because they still have this very loose foundation those wires haven't been strengthened and they can't mount a stress reaction to come out so that would be my answer to that question of course the third thing was you know industrialized tra trauma and in that we have this chronic stress all around us all the time. That really comes down to making better choices, making sure you have good boundaries around yourself, not taking on too much, knowing when to say no, what knowing when to say yes, feeding yourself well, resting, all those things that you know we've known for a long, long time and we just tend to not practice. All right, so that's it for today. I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you so much for being here and watching. If this was useful and you think it might help someone you know, please share this video. I would appreciate it very, very much. Take very good care. Bye for now.